test. The empty can test is a two-part test. First of all, you come up and you abduct the arms to 90 degrees with a full can. Okay, so here's my full can. I'm holding on to my cans. And the patient resists pressure from the examiner. Okay, next, rotate the arms to about 30 degrees and empty the cans. And now do the same thing. Resist, or I'll resist abduction, she resists my downward pressure. So the empty can test. Start here, resist my pressure, okay? Normal patients should be able to do that. Rotate, empty the cans, and now resist my pressure again. Someone who has a rotator cuff tear, you'll basically not be able to hold that arm up anymore. All right, so that's the empty can or joke test. Stand up for me, please. And turn your back to the crowd. Now, we're going to do, we're going to do Gerber's lift off sign. I want you to place your hand with your, back of your hand touching your back, and I want you to lift your hand away from your back. Okay? That's Gerber lift off. All you do is just have them do this, and you just have them lift their hands straight off their back. Same thing with the other hand. Okay? Gerber lift off. Basically, subscapularis. So the other ones we've been talking about were primarily supraspinatus. This one specifically will help to address subscapularis. Very simple test. So if you think it's a rotator cuff, do that test to rule out subscapularis. If they can lift their hand off their back, it's their norm. If they can't lift their hand off their back, then that's positive for subscapularis injury. All right, the next test, also one of my favorites. This one shows up on board examinations and is one that you'll see routinely done in outpatient, not just in orthopedic centers, and that's the Codman's or drop arm test. This is passive abduction of the arm to 90 degrees, and I want you to hold them. Relax. Okay. Keep your shoulders nice and level. <laughs> okay. Passive abduction to 90 degrees. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to let go of the patient's arm and ask them to hold their arm in this position for a second. And even with a rotator cuff tear, most people will be able to maintain that arm position or above. However, once they drop below 90 degrees, you're going to ask them, what I want you to do is I want you to slowly lower your hand to your side, and they should be able to do that. Keep your hand here. Don't pull your hand away, because if they have a rotator cuff tear, when they get to about right there, their arm is just going to fall. So what you want to do is slowly, okay, go ahead and lower your arm, and just let it fall. Okay, she, won't, she won't relax, but you want to catch it, okay? Now, I want you to just slowly lower your arm to your side, okay? Slowly lower it to the side. Be there, ready to catch it in case you can't sustain it. So the average person can do that, and they can slowly lower their arm to their side. person with a rotator cuff tear, when they get to about right there, their arm's just going to fall. They're not going to be able to maintain that. So that's the drop arm or Codman's test. Uh, the near impingement. Pronated hand forcibly flexed through 180 degrees. So what you're going to do is bring their arm up like that. And you're going to be palpating the shoulder as you do this. But you need to do it briskly. Okay? And let your patient know what's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to bring them up. All right. So tell them what's going to happen and then bring them all the way up through 180 degrees. What you're feeling for is any impingement, any clunking, any instability in the shoulder as you're going through that. And you'll feel it. You won't feel it today because everybody's got normal shoulders in here. But when you do feel it, it'll be easy. You'll definitely pick it up. Okay, next we have Hawkins Kennedy. So I want to flex the shoulder to 90 degrees. I want to flex the elbow to 90 degrees and I want to internally <coughs> rotate the shoulder. Again, feeling the shoulder the whole time. So Hawkins Kennedy, flex the shoulder to 90, flex the elbow to 90, internally rotate. Any, any questions on that? You, and again, these are done briskly. It's not like, okay, let's see how this works. All right, no, you have to rotate that shoulder in. Once I'm in this position, I'm going to do the last test on the shoulder. This was a test also for rotator cuff, but also give you a little bit of discomfort with uh, some of your bursitis, subacromial bursitis, things like that. The last test we're going to do is the cross arm adduction test and basically all you do is take them from this position and bring it across here. 
All I did was I shifted my hand from her shoulder over to her acromioclavicular joint because this is a test for AC stability. So when I bring it, so she was in this position, I was feeling the shoulder as I rotated it. Now I'm just going to reach back a little bit, feel the AC joint, and bring the shoulder across. Okay. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for subluxation of that chromioclavicular joint, checking for an AC tear. Any questions on those? Um, are you doing these tests on both arms or only yes. the affected? You always, you always start on the unaffected. And what I told the previous group and what I'm going to tell you is my preferred way of doing this is to do all of these tests on the unaffected side first and then do all of the tests on the affected side because otherwise you know you do this test and then you come over here and you do that test then you come back over here and do this test and you come back over here and do that test and you're bouncing back and forth and it becomes a little disrupted and, and I think a little confusing to do that if you don't think that you're capable of performing these tests within a couple of minutes and then going over to this side and doing the same test and comparing the results on those two sides then you may end up having to do it one test at a time. The key is most of the patients that you're going to have on a normal shoulder, you're going to know what the normal results are. So when you come over here, it's going to be relatively obvious that it's different than the other shoulder. If there's one particular finding you're not quite sure about, and you go, okay, let me see, I did this, or I did this, and I did that, well, you know, I'm not so sure, then come back over to this one and do it on this side again and then, you know, do a comparison on that one test if you're not sure. But I just, I see a lot of people bouncing back and forth and when you're working around a table and having to go back and you cannot reach across and do these tests, it just gets a little confusing. All right, enough jibber jabber. Let's start, let's stop at this point, give you guys about 15... <laughs>